Hello, this is Steve Birdwell. I'm the president of Remedial Construction Services, and I'd like to discuss today the slurry walls and their application and construction techniques. Generally, real quick, the uh, overview of what I thought, thought we'd discuss today would be the applications of uh, slurry walls, the uh, construction methods that we use in constructing slurry wall, and the construction means that we use in constructing slurry walls. In general, there's two applications uh, for slurry walls, the non-structural walls, which would include uh, groundwater cutoff walls, dewatering uh, control structures, containment of contaminated groundwater, and then secondary containment for landfills, tank farms, uh, and that kind of thing. The structural walls uh, applications include retaining walls, deep foundations, so parking lots, basements for um, tall buildings, and then uh, deep large diameter shafts, which can include intake structures and tunnel shafts. Generally, construction techniques, uh, there's two types of construction techniques. There's the slurry trench method, and then there's the slurry panel method construction technique. This slide illustrates the uh, slurry trench method. As you can see, the, uh, the trench uh, is a continuous trench where the backfill is being placed on one end of it and the excavation proceeds uh, opposite direction. The trench is supported with a fluid, a high-density fluid, generally um, 15 pound per square foot differential between the backfill and the slurry. But as you can see, you, it's excavated by a hydraulic excavator in a continuous motion. This little video gives you an illustration of a slurry wall being constructed using the trenching method. This particular excavator has the capacity to be able to dig trenches in excess of 90 feet. This particular wall is is actually 185 feet in depth, but uh, the first 90 feet is being constructed with a hydraulic excavator using the continuous trenching method. Again, the trench is supported with the fluid. You can see the fluid coming out of the bucket. This fluid is a combination of bentonite and water, generally about 5% bentonite by, by weight, and the uh, slurry acts on the walls of the excavation, the hydraulic head differential between the groundwater and the slurry level in the trench uh, supports the wall as the hydraulic head differential uh, presses against the filter cake. These are generally constructed in uh, panels as well, but, uh, but the trench is continuously open. The uh, excavator operator is, is excavating blind, and what I mean by that is he cannot see it, obviously, where his bucket is. So he ends up doing this by field. It's a very specialized uh, construction technique, especially at the depths that, uh, that we're talking about here. This particular excavator is uh, 410,000 pound. It's a Coring 1466 that has been modified with uh, extended stick and, and extended boom. Trenches are generally three foot wide. The uh, second construction technique after the slurry trenching method would be a panel construction technique. And these are generally used for uh, structural walls or if there's a significant elevation change or if you have uh, ground conditions that are susceptible to, uh, to failure because of surcharges. So the panel construction technique generally will have a guide wall system which will guide the excavation. You prepare the slurry, 
you construct the panel, which is what's illustrated here, uh, excavate it underneath the slurry so the trench is supported with the slurry. You place uh, an end stop in to separate the uh, panel from the, the secondary panel that will be uh, excavated. Placement of reinforcement if it's a structural wall, this is rebar or uh, steel beams. Then you trimmy place the concrete from the bottom up as the concrete rises in the panel. It dis displaces the slurry. You collect the slurry and uh, clean it. And then uh, <clears throat> remove the key or end stop and then excavate subsequent panels. So this is done. Uh, there's a concrete panel here. You do an excavation. Um, you may skip one, come back and re-excavate this. So the next panel would be uh, adjacent to this one. This is a hydraulic uh, clam on a Lee Bear crane. Um, Recon's doing a uh, plastic concrete wall here. This is a 135 foot depth, this particular uh, section of the wall. And as you can see, the uh, construction technique is, is significantly slower, uh, primarily because of depth and uh, capacity of the of the buckets but it's really the only practical way to, to do excavations in excess of 90 to 100 feet in, in total depth uh, where a hydraulic excavator is uh, beyond the reach. This particular clam is a hydraulic clam meaning that it's powered by uh, hydraulic cylinders uh, that's connected to the uh, hydraulic motor uh, of the crane and uh, if you can see the, the hydraulic uh, cabling or hoses uh, are wound up here and then extend down as, as you go down. There are also mechanical clams that uh, can be operated off of uh, continuous or cycle duty uh, cranes. The last construction technique slurry wall construction technique is what we call a hydro mill. These uh, particular hydro mills are designed for uh, hard rock or more difficult excavations, so cemented sands, hard shales uh, that are not practical to be excavated uh, using hydraulic clams. The, the way the hydro mill works is, as you can see, there's uh, two heads at the end of the mill these rotate are driven hydraulically and they actually grind the material that you're excavating. A uh, slurry, bentonite slurry will be pumped down to the head and out and then back up uh, to the surface. This, uh, the slurry as it, as it pumps in a cycle through, uh, through the head will carry out the fines or the rock that uh, is being cut by the head. And then once the slurry gets to the surface, You'll uh, separate it out with a desanding, uh, either cyclones or uh, screens, and uh, reclaim the, the slurry and then repump it down so it's a continuous duty, uh, much like a tunneling head would do for a, a micro tunneling machine.